people are watching me. All right, so uh, make sure you take notes. Get out your pen and your pad. Don't ever expect Crypto Roots to start teaching and uh, you, not, you not take notes down. This is definitely class time. Uh, this is free for anyone who's watching. And um, let's just get into it. I, I got a lot of information to go over. So let's start off of it. Let's pre do the present. Let me know if this is coming through. Is that coming through? It's a little bit delayed, but we can Turn it, oh, I need to hear myself, though. Turn it up. Turn it up. So I can hear myself. All right. Virtual economies and starting your own. What is a virtual economy? All right, let's do this. A virtual economy is an economy that exists in a virtual world where users can exchange virtual or real assets, products, or services in the context of a game or platform environment. Users can participate in virtual economies for entertainment or for real economic benefit. Virtual economies originally emerged in multi-user Dungeon Dragon games, okay? Uh, back in the early 1970s. Um, they also exist in non-player, pla uh, non-gaming platforms as well. Today's largest economies exist in MMORPGs, massive multiplayer online role-playing games such as World of Warcraft and Guild of Wars. User engagement and moderation on some social networking platforms have evolved into s forms of social currency. Vir virtual economies have been inadvertently developed on these platforms, okay? I highlighted this, I underline, a virtual economy can exist on any platform on which real money can be spent on users created digital assets, products, services, or interactions. Okay? Now what does this all mean? What it means is when you get a bunch of people together on a platform, especially in the digital world, the virtual world, that means people within that organization or are going to are going to have uh, incent they're going to uh, be incentivized or they're going to hold certain things more valuable they're going to create certain forms of tokens that uh, display value it doesn't matter what they're called and most the best example is video games early video games such as uh, Sonic's rings such as uh, Mario stars such as uh, Diddy Kong's Bananas. These are uh, incentivized, uh, you know what I'm saying, as far as when you're on the platform, even though they don't me me mean real money in the real world, they, we still find value in, in that video game world. That's why we collect these stars. That's why we do these missions. That's why we collect these potions in these virtual worlds is, and, Anyone who else is playing that game would find that valuable too. Oh, you have a level seven dragon potion, or you got 26,000 rings. That must've took a long time. It's not easy to get those rings. So what happens is, is when you connect these people in an online environment that are playing in real time together, what's gonna happen is they're going to come up with their own tokenized systems. Now, So, some platforms, some platforms al allow you to exchange goods, and so they allow you to trade within that virtual economy. You'll be able, whatever it is, if, if you play Final Fantasy, if you play, you know, you'll be able to trade with other non-role-playing characters, or you're able to trade with role-playing characters. So, other platforms, they. They dis they they disencourage you using real money, or utilizing their video games for um, for any type of profit. They feel that you're gonna they feel that you're going to ruin the gameplay of the system when you're you're bringing in real money. So in some cases, some companies encourage uh, uh, buying and selling of digital goods and services on their platforms others discourage it so what's happening is um, what's happening is can you can you turn it up 
Can, can you hear me? I don't know because I'm not hearing. You can't hear me? Okay. Alright, so so what happens is forgive forgive it, man. I'm still I'm still I'm still learning how to do all this shit. I'm doing it on my own. Somebody was supposed to teach me, they're not, so I'm learning. So what happens is you've been having this emerging market. And like I said, you cannot stop markets. You cannot stop markets. As long as people are willing to buy and sell, it doesn't matter. You can't crush it out. So for a very long time, there's always been the need to combine the real world with the digital world. And as far as goods and services in that digital world, people are going to value that <coughs> in the real world. So that's called an emerging market. Is as bigger as these games get, the more people that join these platforms, the more goods and services that are created on the platforms, sooner or later, people are gonna find real world value in these virtual goods and services. So um, it's almost pointless to stop these type of, uh, these type of real world transactions with virtual uh, games. Now, what happens is, is this is this has been going on for quite some long, uh, quite some time. What happens is, is that you have certain young kids or certain young kids in poorer countries who will play a, a video game. They will level up <coughs> really high in the video video game, and they would actually sell the account. For uh, so you would have people uh, people in third world countries play this high level video game and then sell it to people in first world countries for uh for an uh an inf an inf more valuable type of money that they can bring back to their currency. So that's what that was the hustle is that you would level up in the video game, sell the account, sell it for 3 or 4 times or 5 times more than you would if you would just play uh if you would make any money if you just played it or if you just uh sold it to uh, somebody in your country, but you would level up in the account and then you would sell your uh, video game account to someone in a richer country so that you can make a bigger profit. So people have been doing that for quite some time. Now, uh, there's, there's another term called uh, game farming or gold farming. It's when you play a video game and you make enough revenue in that video game that you're able to do a lot more things and then you would sell that revenue that you made to someone uh, who's just getting in the game who doesn't want to have to go through the hard work it would take that you would play so this this type of um, this type of real world to digital virtual world goods and services has been going on some time you can call it a black market uh, it's just an emerging market that's what I call them emerging markets markets that are always going to keep coming up especially if these platforms and technologies get more bigger and more connected now all right, so let's get into slide two. Let's get into slide two. Why should companies adopt virtual economies on their platform? A lot of success, a lot of successful companies own platforms in which virtual economies already exist. Facebook. By creating virtual economies in a game-like environment for their users to interact and collaborate in, company platforms can experience rapid growth in their primary business activity. So. What that means is, if you have a large, a large company, you have a large following, it is almost better for you to create and have a virtual economy versus fight against it. Now, what happens is, is that users on your platform, you can they're incentivized to even, they can earn more. They could actually gain more revenue by being on your platform from being involved in that virtual economy. Now, with that being said, you have more user engagement, you have more attention, you have more time, you end up having more data over the users on your platform that are engaging in the vir virtual economies. So essentially, your platform's uh, more potential to grow. <coughs> when you have incentivized programs within your platform. Also, you could have collaborative interactions such as third party software, such as maybe Monster uh, creating a, a suit or some weapons 
that they can use on your platform so that Monster, uh, not only do they get advertisements, but you get uh, revenue from Monster, from people purchasing the Monster Sword, like Monster Drinks, or you know what I'm saying, the Monster Boat, whatever. You could work with third party platforms that can sponsor, or, and you make revenue when people purchase a Coca-Cola outfit. Not that it, I'm not saying that uh, it has to go there, but this is just how advertisements and marketing, you know, and economics works when you have large platforms with a lot of users. So you're actually able to make another form of revenue when you open up your uh, your virtual economy to have sponsors. If that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. People, people in the chat. They can, hear you. they can hear me. Cool, cool. All right. So. These are some of the things to think about when it comes to, I would say, exponential, the, the potential. I'm always going to say potential because I'm never going to say this is what's going to happen and you're guaranteed. The, expon the possible exponential potential of profit is extremely high. And as far as the onboarding process of creating your own virtual economy, I mean, you could, you, what I'm going to show you is there's already frameworks, there's already social media platforms that have, have pretty much have done all the work for you. All you need to do is focus on having a good idea and how you can market. It really doesn't take a lot of extra energy. In fact, you don't have to be a computer programmer to come up with a, 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 valuable, a valuable virtual economy. Okay? Now, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So, what are some new technologies we can enhance virtual economies with? So now, we had fiat currency system, we had the banking system, we had uh, patent, no open source technology, no open source gaming. Um, everything was closed off and centralized. And that's why it took so long for us to make this transition from digital assets into real world money. And Bitcoin was the first to kind of come up with the, uh, the general way of how to do it. But now <clears throat> it's here. So what are some of the things we can utilize? Blockchains. Blockchains, blockchains. Blockchains are powerful because of their immutability. It can never be changed. Blockchains are powerful because of their transparency. Anyone, anyone can look and verify on their own with no permission of did something really go down. Now, cryptocurrencies. We have we have valuable uh, we have digital assets on these blockchains, and you have all the data is tra uh, transparent. Now, on these these different types of cryptocurrencies, you have coins and you have tokens. Coins <clears throat> coins usually have their own blockchain. Okay, coins usually have their own blockchain. Tokens. Tokens rely on a blockchain, all right? Tokens rely on a blockchain. Just keep that in mind. You cannot mine a, uh, a token. So for example, Mana, <coughs> Mana, which is the, the currency of Decentraland, that's a token. The BAT, the basic attention token, it says it's a token. So you can't mine tokens. But tokens are a representation of uh, value through a smart contract that is on the blockchain. So what are some of the different types of tokens we can use within virtual economies? Utility tokens. Tokens that have a use case. You can, you're able to do certain things within these economies with these certain tokens. Otherwise, you can't perform these actions. Hopefully that makes sense. The, the token is an action you can perform on the in these virtual economies without the token you can't perform these actions all right security tokens security tokens represent ownership of something in the real world okay they represent uh, a, a fraction of an apple stock or a fraction of a real estate because you can tokenize you can tokenize assets now you can tokenize a house you can tokenize um, a stock you can and say you can't afford a whole Amazon stock or you can't afford a whole Nike stock Well, you can tokenize that we making a security token and then it could be divided and you can have fractions of a security right expiring tokens 
tokens that expire after a while. So you're you're incentivized to utilize these tokens in a, in a certain uh, time period. Otherwise, they become obsolete. Limited limited use, yeah. Expiring tokens, limited use. So the the uses of these tokens are limited. So you're able. And what that, what that means is that the tokens get burned. And what does that mean? Because if it lives forever, how can it just disappear, right? Now, what what burning tokens essentially is is you're purposely uh, d deflating the currency. You're purposely just taking a bunch of the money and dumping it out of the system. And the way you do that, the way you take a bunch of money and you d uh, dump it out of the system is, how many people in the chat? Uh, 31. Yeah. Six, can you explain blockchains? Yeah, tell them questions and answers at the end. Tell them you. Yo, questions and, questions and answers will be at the end. Um, I'm gonna try to go through this slowly. So what, I'm gonna get back to it. So what, what burning tokens is, is you're gonna send your tokens to an address that you purposely lose the private keys to. I'm gonna say that again. When you burn tokens, when you burn currency, you're purposely sending your cryptocurrencies to an address that you purposely choose to lose access to. So that they stay stuck on that address and no one has access to those tokens. They're, they're no longer on the market. It's, a, it's like a deflationary act. So that's what expiring tokens, burning tokens means. So non-fungible tokens, NFT. NFT. Sorry, give me a second. Give me a second. Yeah, so that's what expiring tokens, burning tokens mean. So non-fungible tokens, NFT. NFT. Sorry, give me a second. Give me a second. So that's what expiring tokens, burning tokens mean. All right. All right, non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible tokens. Crypto collectibles. ERC-721 smart contracts. Okay? Now, those are uh, crypto collectibles such as... Such as uh, crypto kitties. Such as Decentraland parcels. And non-fungibility means it cannot be exchanged for anything. You can't exchange it for itself it's unique within its own so it's non-fungible and that gives it a different set of value okay that gives it a different set of value now non-fungible token enabled asset ownership check that out I'm gonna say that again non-fungible token enabled ownership asset ownership now essentially what that means is if you actually are the owner or if you own the private keys to this address that holds this non-fungible token you are actually the owner <clears throat> of that possession physically it could be a physical uh, possession so for instance if if say you would mod say you would tokenize the mona lisa okay you you would tokenize the mona lisa so you're you're actually getting a legal smart contract that's digitalized saying that this this Mona Lisa is now a virtual uh, virtual asset, and any and then if it's a virtual asset and it's all the legalities are behind it backing it, then whoever owns the token is the actual owner of that digital asset. So if you own the Mona Lisa token, then you're the only one in the world that owns that token. So you're the actual owner. And you would have the the legal the you know this is when regulations and legalities come in and that whole smart contracts legally binding that you would be the actual real owner of the Mona Lisa by being the non fungible token enabled asset owner. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna pause for a second. All right, all right, family. Now, I'm gonna take my time, we're gonna go slow. 
And so, there's the you heard of the universe, and you've heard of the multiverse. But there's metaverses. Now, I'm gonna show you probably the best example. I'm gonna probably show you the best example of what I've been able to find so far as far as virtual economies and a metaverse, which is a very vast universe in the virtual realm. And the virtual realm meaning the virtual reality because that's what uh, we're designing on. So the best example, we're gonna go over it, is a Ethereum, Ethereum. It's a cyberpunk metaverse. This is some really, really powerful stuff, okay? Ghost in the Shell, Blade Runner, Tron, The Matrix, Fifth Element, Snow Crash. If these names are the, if these are the names that, mind, uh, that, <laughs> that you learned in the Central and the Project Ethereum district may be for you, all right? So, they share an interest in cyberpunk aesthetics, okay? A city with different sectors and a planned, out, a planned layout. A large exclusive club at the center of the city. Activities, tournaments, gaming, nightclub, theme, fest, theme festivals. Plans for shared monetization of activities within the city. If you share our vision, come and join our pack in Project Ethereum District. Okay? So these guys, they're actually going to create like a real Ready Player One type of environment okay now I'm gonna go over a little bit with you but this is I'm, I'm just kind of showing you a rough over overview of what the best examples of people creating their own virtual worlds and creating their own virtual economies within that own virtual world okay now the title Ethereum cyberpunk theme district okay you got your leaders, you got your graphic designers, all right? Land needed, so you don't, it doesn't, you don't require any land uh, to actually join it. But to actually, if you were to purchase a district, if you were to purchase a parcel within this district, the value of your parcel, the value of your network would go, would go up exponentially. Because now this district has got more of a virtual economy within it that anyone's free to come and anyone's free to leave everything's decentralized so what you do on these platforms is completely up to you and what, and what you're doing in the virtual reality world is up to you and remember these parcels are worth real money people are going to be playing real games attending real events or virtual reality events and you want to have uh, as far as profiting uh, digitally in the virtual world you want to have real estate, virtual real estate in these areas, okay? And here's a, here's a brief explanation. City extension, you wanna get as many lands together as possible, right? They're telling you what they wanna do. They cr uh, So they're getting a bunch of neighbors and they're saying, hey, yo, come join us. Yo, you own a parcel in the decentral land? Yo, you own a parcel? Yo, you live right next to her? You will live all, yo, let's just all get together. Let's just all come up. Let's just all get together. Let's all paint our houses the same way. Let's all dress the same way, but let's all have the same types of options. So not anyone, now you don't, it's not like some, some communist type. It's like, nah, like we all agree that this is kind of how we want the neighborhood to look. It's called a district. Then you got the urban planning. You got to, now you got people. Now you got people with the parcel saying, "Yeah, we want to team up together." Then you got to have people who are planning it. How do we want this district to look? Where do we want things? Where do we want the big pyramid? Architectural development. How do we want the general layouts of the architecture so it all looks uh, uh, unique, and but it all looks um, conformity? All right, you got to create attractions, things that bring people to your district. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's movies, whether it's carnivals, whether it's games, events, you gotta create attractions. General traffic, all right? Social media uh, traffic mass, you know what I'm saying? Plan together, 
All right, generate more and more traffic. Uh, elaborate financial organization, and enhan enhance our, you know what I'm saying? So this is what they came up with to create their own virtual metaverse, virtual economy, in the virtual reality world, you know? And so some very, very powerful information, and it, it's, it's deep. You know, it says, we have set out to create a city unlike anything ever created before. A city that would make William Gibson and Neil S Stevenson proud. A living, breathing, cyberpunk city organization that is materialized by our community and that evolves thanks to contributions from members. In this city, everyone would have a place to call home and a place to be whomever they want, whether it be a merchant selling virtual reality replicas of uh, something's motorcycle from Ikira, skins from Avatar of all shapes and sizes, members that just want to come in and game. We dream to build a city where all our cyberpunk fantasies are possible. You see, they put it down for you. They laid it down what they're about. They laid it down, what kind of theme? What was the purpose? What was the inspiration? What do they plan to do to bring value to these areas? You know I'm saying like, this is how you start it from the ground up. This is some of the latest technology, some of the, and it costs nothing. It costs you nothing. It, you don't have to have a piece of land to, to join this. You can profit more, you know what I'm saying? Or it, it's however, but, they're letting you know this is what they're about and this is how they're doing it, all right? So here's the history. It started from Decentraland, you know what I'm saying? Yo, you know what I'm saying? So they show you, our team is diverse, 3D modeling, city planning, so what you, <coughs> forgive me. I'm excited, I'm, I'm uh, so they get people who have already done this in the real world and they're getting them to be involved in the virtual reality world. Okay? Check it out. Inspiration. They tell you where they get the inspiration of doing all this from. Okay? I can go on forever. Now, check this out. Check this out. Ethereum City will be one of the main attractions for visitors and dwellers of Decentraland as it intends to be the largest cyberpunk algomeration of the metaverse with which will have practice. The metaverse club inspired on the Ethereum project as its focal point, okay? So they're telling you they're gonna have this main club as the whole center of this district. The purpose of the city is to put forward an immerse, um, uh, immersive experience thanks to the homogeneity of its con uh, concept and materialization where each individual will be able to, uh, to life its cyber dreams, okay? Now, Club Fractus. Now, it's a club. This is like, if you've seen Ready Player One, this is where everything goes down. This is where the nightclub goes down. This is where, you know, fights go down. This is where, you know what I'm saying? It's like the stadium, like the Staples Center. You know what I'm saying? Of, of, of the whole district. Then you can be a member, right? Membership of Fractus is based on the citizenship of the city. There will be multiple tiers of membership that will get you access to different areas. So they're saying you can't just go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? You got to be a citizen. And within the citizen, you got different levels of membership. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like you can just do whatever you want, sort of. They still got rules and regulations so that... You know what I'm saying? Uh, everyone's everyone's not able to access all the same tools and resources at the same time, you know? As the levels of citizenships are being decided, I would create an example of some of the proposals, citizenship, take notes. Like Shane. So you got different levels of membership. You got a vouchy. All right, you can look into this. Right to the practice. All right, a vouchy is a membership given to all the Decentraland users. This membership comes with rights to enter Fractus, but they will not be able to participate in almost any of the functionalities of the interior of Fractus. So you can enter, you can enter the club, but you can't really do a whole lot though. You can't really do a whole lot. All right, it's primary use as a tour. So this membership is primarily used as a tour of the facility to give opportunity to see what, what it has to offer before paying for the membership. Items that would be disabled under the uh, membership follows private chat, ability to participate in gaming. So you can only really check it out. You know what I'm saying? 
you can't utilize all the resources in game to make a profit, you know what I'm saying, unless you're a member. So I'm not going to go through everything, but the memberships. It says if you're a member, you can participate in gaming tournaments, members only lounging areas, exclusive areas of the casino. You can view certain uh, parties like such as live streams within the virtual world. Okay? Contributor, stakeholder, uh, sh uh, stakeholder founder, activities, gaming. So understand that this, they got a tournament area, they got gamings, they got a nightclub, you know what I'm saying? And the aesthetics. Now the aesthetics of this is what they want to look like if you've ever seen Ready Player One. Okay? What? Yo, question, we're gonna handle questions at the end. This is gonna be a long class, man. Um, I finally got in the mode now of understanding how to do the lives. So give me a second, I'm gonna pause. All right, so monetization. Money, 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 money. This is a sensitive topic on this proposal as we're working to make fractus a primary source of revenue for the city. As of right now, we agree that all money we require from the monetized act activities of membership profits will be used to purchase more land, help pay for developers, artists. So right now, they're, they're getting the bread up. And with the bread, they're buying more properties to expand the district. You know what I'm saying? This is what, this is what they're doing. This is an opportunity for you to get in, you know? And so it's deep. So this is how the uh, the whole pyramid's gonna look. It's deep, it's deep. It goes on and on, it goes on and on. All right? So this is the pyramid right here. This is a, a, a prototype of what they want. So you'll be, what, you'll be able to virtually uh, walk in here and you'll be able to game tournaments, nightclubs. You who knows? You can do whatever you want, and it would be worth real money. Okay. So that's Ethereum project. Now, if you want to get involved in Ethereum, if you want to get involved with Ethereum and start developing and start seeing and start util <coughs> start utilizing them as a way to kind of start coming up with your own ideas. Give me a second, I'm gonna burn one. I'm not used to talking so much, so loud. This is crypto class, so I'm gonna get used to it. I hope you guys are enjoying the information. I know it's a lot of information. Uh, I may have to uh, go over this again. I mean, in fact, this is only part one because there's just so much information. All right. Now, you want to sign up for Discord. On Discord, I'm gonna put the link. Uh, I'm gonna hit me up, and I'll send you the link to Ethereum. So this is the disc Discord of Ethereum. Okay. Now you can check it out. You can chat with them. They're constantly building. They're constantly developing. They're passing around ideas. They got, they got, you know what I'm saying? You can ask any question. You can get involved in the community. Everyone's involved. That is, that is on the Discord. So this is, like I said, you want to sign up for Discord. This is how you're going to get answers in real time, 24-7, and be able to kind of, um, to find out more of what you need to. You know, so Ethereum, Discord is where you're going to get involved in the real-time production uh, of, of this district. And I say get involved, man. It's, this is some very revolutionary technology. You can be involved. You can profit. You know what I'm saying? Even if you didn't, weren't able to sell, sell the, uh, a Decentraland parcel, even if you couldn't afford it, MANA is the cryptocurrency that runs on Decentraland. Let me see if I can pull it up. Give me a second. It's a lot of information, y'all. I don't know how I don't know how long class is gonna be, but it's a lot of information. Let's look up mana real quick. All right, mana. This is this this is the currency of Decentraland. It's currently worth about four cents right now. 
All right. Um, now, the all-time high was about twenty-eight cents. So even if you can't purchase a parcel with uh, with mana, you can still own mana and profit as the value of Decentraland and mana goes up. Possibly, you know. Uh, it it just so that's a way you can, and then your mana you can convert to the currency of the virtual reality world and utilize that even further. So it, it's good to hold some mana as well, okay? So that's mana, you can purchase it, you go to exchanges, and you can purchase it on these exchanges, Binance, OKX, these are the different exchanges where you can purchase mana, okay? Now, whew, we're gonna switch gears a little bit, give me a second. Give me a second. Just give me a second, because we're about to switch gears. We about to get into it. Now, <clears throat> like I said, understanding virtual economies and ideas of starting your own. Now, so starting your own. So crypto roots. Have you started your own virtual economy? Yes, I have. I've started my own virtual economy. How did it go? It didn't exactly work out in the long run, but it's still not over yet. So, you know what? I'm gonna I'm pull it up on YouTube. Give me a second, and then I want I want you uh, I want you guys to watch the video. So. Here, I, I gotta express myself. So I, I was so inspired by cryptocurrency that I, I really wanted to create my own organization. I wanted to do something revolutionary. Um, I was studying crypto, studying crypto. I was grinding. And I came up with an idea that, I don't know, I was just so moved by it. I came up with an idea of, of a decentralized autonomous organization. It's called a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. Okay? And to put it briefly, I'm gonna play the YouTube video and you know what I'm saying? You guys can watch it and just, this is me. This is the idea I came up with. What up, YouTube? This your boy, Crypto Roots, a.k.a. The Real Black Satoshi, a.k.a. Crypto Bomber, the blockchain hustler. And I'm on the beautiful island of Maui. And I just wanted to talk to you a quick second about Kaleidoscope, the DAO, the decentralized autonomous organization that I envision that I'm helping build. This is a creation of my own head to eventually design and develop a decentralized autonomous organization. And eventually no one will be able to control it fully. The people control it. Uh, you, it's all based on voting. It's all based on how much work you put in. It's an invitation only. And basically the vision is that anyone with a laptop or a smartphone that has internet access, anyone from around the world can, can employ, join a network and employ themselves. And if you don't have any skills that you can do online, we will train you for free. And you will, you will contribute by paying back the, uh, the people, your teachers, with your labor once you have uh, online skills. Or you can pay a small fee month month to support uh, the teachers. This is a huge organization. We, uh, there's non-fundable -fund to non token managers. 
Whether it's finance managers, we're gonna need traders, we're gonna need miners. I know how to do a little bit of everything, but I'm gonna have to hire some experts. The Dow already is funded. We're doing proof of community and you should join my discord if you want to find out more about it basically it's decentralized global cooperative for entrepreneurs and basically you'll have your own wallet it'll all be anonymous all be autonomous we'll have smart contracts that transact with each other that transact with humans and that also transact with bots we'll kind of, uh, welcome AI and machine, machine learning we're gonna need front end web developers we're gonna need people who know about marketing we, we want to uh, buy virtual, we're going to stick to buying virtual digital assets, basically, like crypto collectibles and parcels on Decentraland. And basically, the DAO uh, will, will fund any member of the community, you know, any member just has to propose what they want to use the funds for. And basically, I see it as being uh, transportation, housing, and travel expenses. For every member of the DAO, not having to pay out of pocket, but the DAO pays them based on how long they've been and how much they contributed. No one can buy their way in on the DAO. It's all about contribution and uh, work ethic and quality. You know, we're doing this in a decentralized manner. So join my Discord if you want to find out more about it. But this is some major revolutionary shit I'm working on. You know, saying they may lock a nigga up and may shoot a nigga. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to create some shit that will never be able to be stopped. That will only grow stronger and bigger and help the world at the same time. So this is, I'm taking all my crypto knowledge and I'm throwing it into this. And I'm putting my money where my mouth is. And I'm going to start hiring people and I'm going to start decentralizing it. And the goal is for, not, for me not to control it. The goal is for the people to control it. And yes, we'll have our own token. We'll not, we'll, we won't be launching an ICO. We're just going to build this from the ground up. And I'm going to need everybody who's down, who's, who's ready to hustle, who's about that crypto life, who wants to contribute. And believe me, I believe in pay, uh, time being paid. I believe in exchange of value. I don't expect anyone to work for free. I believe in compensation, you know. So I'll leave the link down in the description. Much love. Crypto Roots. I'm out. Peace. Yo. All right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm for real about that life. Like, for real, for real about that life. So, uh, some magical spiritual happened. I ended up manifesting uh, the Kaleidoscope Dow into existence. I straight up did. And um, here is the website. I started a centralized autonomous organization. I only wanted or was specifically finding, uh, you can go to kld.life. That is the, uh, the Dow that I started and created. Uh, I ended up having well over a hundred something people almost I don't know close to like 200 people I was only studying crypto for about a year and I ended up like straight up I, I expressed my vision so clearly I wasn't an advanced programmer at this point I knew a bit about programming I knew I knew a bit of trading I knew a bit and I was able to express this idea so pa thoroughly and passionately to people who were just getting started in cryptocurrency but what ended up happening was that experienced people started joining my organization they started um they started offering their services that people were like and then i had we had dude it was big i was doing it i was doing it big and i was running it from my cell phone like off my laptop and you know what I'm saying? So the whole thing was if you don't have any skills, we can teach you. Um, you know what I'm saying? True financial freedom, working as a community to achieve a new level of freedom while staying anonymous. You know what I'm saying? Are you interested? Don't be afraid. Join our Discord. Uh, a decentralized global cooperative for freelancers. That's what I came up with this. And I'm not bragging about it. I just knew what I wanted. And I, I, I had to express it. And people just were, people were digging it. People, I had, I had Google employees joining my organization. I'm not joking. I had people who were developing software for like 20 years joining my organization. Like, and I'm like, I wouldn't say my organization because it's supposed to be decentralized. So I started it with an 18 year old kid from London. I'm not joking. 
we, he's, we were, I only had like 16, 60. I had like very little subscribers and he had little subscribers and I was still spitting crypto game. He was like, yo, the game he's kind of spitting is pretty dope. You know, and then I told him my idea. He's like, let's just do it. Let's go for it. And we started going for it and I was hustling. And I, uh, you know, I'll tell you about how it ended up happening later. But the future of work is here. Thanks to cryptocurrency to implements, we have entered a new world of the, uh, the web 3.0. There's no looking back. Kaleidoscope online, uh, exclusive invitation online grass movements. So I break it all down. I break it all down of what this movement was about. Decentralized, global, secure, Ethereum, blockchain, individuality, freedom. It's the Discord server. Um, now, instead of the white paper, we were... I, I mostly wrote the white napkin. I know it was it was kind of like check it out. It was it was how we kind of got around kaleidoscope the Dow, decentralized global cooperative for free, freelancers. All right, written and inspired by Ryoto Nakamoto, Satoshi Nakamoto's stepson. So you know what I'm saying I broke down the game. I broke down the game of how this all works, what we're looking for, what we need, what type of memberships, passive, active, dedicated. I broke it down, security, what you need to join, you know what I'm saying, vetting process, the volunteer, I broke it all down. You gotta, see, when you're starting your own virtual economy, you got to make your ideas clear enough. And once these ideas, ideas are clear, <coughs> you never have to really repeat them. It's just, look at the white napkin, look at the white paper, like, look at that, and if you're down, Come on, join us. If you're not down, fine. It's all right. But there's different levels of us. Uh, you can be an intern. You can be a volunteer. You can be a DAO member. You can be, you know what I'm saying? You can be a DAO admin. And then there's the, the DAO visionaries. I broke it all down. So it w there wasn't no, there wasn't a whole lot of questions besides, you know, wh what I, what do I need to do? Or like people were hating too. And also we have, uh, we started our own currency. I started the own currency, KLD which is the ERC20 uh, token on the, for the Kaleidoscope DAO. So in order to, I was paying people in the currency I created. I, you know what I'm saying? I was paying in the ERC20 token. So I can show you because if we go to Etherscan, this is the contract of Kaleidoscope right here, Kaleidoscope the DAO. This is KLD, this is how many the to oh, circulated supply, this is how many addresses, how many different types of transfers. You can see where the money was going. This is a blockchain. You can track, you can track, it's an open public ledger. And this is the uh, uh, ether scan for the Ethereum blockchain. And this is the contract address. So it's really live. This actual currency is still a currency right now. You know what I'm saying? This is actually still a currency right now. So now let's go back. As you can see, the price of it is not what it wasn't worth anything. It wasn't worth anything. So now we go into now we get into a new dilemma. Anyone can create currency, but how do you give that currency value? How anyone can create the money? Now what makes your money valuable? That's the question, that's the struggle, that's where the struggle is. When you're creating your own virtual economy, how do you create, how do you give this thing value if anyone can create it now? So I gave it value as far as what the people were willing to do for Kaleidoscope. They saw the value in where this was going. That's why they accepted KLD as a payment because you're not paying people in USD. That's anti-crypto. But it's not necessarily logical to pay people in Bitcoin because that's a different blockchain that has nothing to do with your, your virtual economy, your DAO, your decentralized autonomous organization. So in order for this economy to really take off in a healthy way, you need to pay people in the currency of your platform. You need to pay people in the currency of, first of all, you got to create the currency. So that's a whole nother thing. And once the currency, and then you gotta establish the monetary policy of the currency. Am I still coming through? Yes. Let me hear myself. One second, fam. All right, so, and the more, <clears throat> the more addresses your contract 
holds, the more decentralized it looks. It doesn't it doesn't look like the majority of the money is in a few addresses. So <coughs> you need to find ways to distribute your currency. You need to find ways uh, to, but you don't, you can't just distribute your currency for free because that's not how it works. Nothing, you sh nothing really should come for free. Even though your currency is not worth anything, you still have to make people find some value in it that one day it could be worth something. Now that's where I was able to to successfully execute and to take things to a next level was I, I, I people were, were, were able to create their own KLD wallet. Through MetaMask, you can create your own token wallet. So now people had an address to send and receive money to. Once after I created the, uh, the token contract, so I created the money. Then you got to decide how much money you're going to create and how much is left and how much you're going to be able to print. You got to think about these things because investors are going to be looking at these aspects of your currency. And if you can just keep creating a whole bunch or if there's just such a limited supply and there's only, you know, so then you got to figure out how divisible it will your currency be. How, how far down can you, do, uh, how small can you break your currency down to? Me, I chose to, instead of eight decimals, I chose four decimals. So it w you couldn't break it down that far. Uh, I think the total supply uh, was, I can't even remember how much the total supply, oh, this was how much we uh, printed. So, you know, there, there, there's so many different things and we can get into the mentorship on how to break this all down, but you gotta create the currency. And then you gotta utilize that currency as in a in a way to uh, for production of a development on that platform for your virtual economy, this is a lot of information. This is a lot of economics. This is starting a corporation or business, a global business, uh, with no permission, with no regulation. You're doing it all on your own, and everything can be verified. Everything can be tracked. Everything's transparent. You've never seen something. It's like an amateur can be a professional, but you got to know what you're doing. You know, so really, you're not a really amateur. You kind of, you know, it's just you got, and then you you got you can't be afraid to put an investment. It takes an investment to create these tokens. Why? Because you got to write this to the blockchain, and it takes energy. It takes time and energy for things to be written into the blockchain, and that's value. So you got to pay a certain amount of value to create for a miner to include such a large piece of data on the blockchain. And then you got to make sure that this is exactly what you want in the long term because it can never be changed. Once you create this smart contract, that's it. You can't just go and flip certain things around. So you got to really know what you're doing. You got to really plan if you're going to really start your own virtual economy. Because the, if you started your own virtual economy, why would anyone uh, start their own virtual economy? Why would anyone start their own virtual economy? Because it's it's like being the Federal Reserve Bank. I mean, damn, because you can create, you can build wealth. I mean, it's unlimited. You can create as much, you can create any coin. And as long as you give it value, you can hold on to as much of that coin as you want. You can save, I saved uh, about almost 200,000 KLD token for myself. And then the other homie, he got 200,000 KLD because if KLD was ever worth a dollar, we at least walk away with, you know what I'm saying, a quarter mil. Like, that was the whole thing. Like, let's build this value up so it reaches a dollar and then let's cash out. And let's save 250,000 for ourselves, and let's put the rest on them. Uh, and then let's save a bunch waiting to be printed. And then let's just put, uh, let's have a budget of KLD that we use for production. And this is all why the price, price is still worth zero and people still are accepting KLD as payment on Kaleidoscope and there's still uh, uh, development is being done. I know I'm going on forever, but this is some of the things you gotta consider if you're gonna really be about the game. Now, we created our own DAP. We created our own decentralized uh, application. It's called Ether Gas Scan. So as a collective, we did this. There was a designer that put in the work that was new. There was a back-end engineer that uh, was really extremely uh, sophisticated. 
I, I was the kind of the, uh, the the I was the one who came up with the idea and expressed it. Every so it took a community to come up with this DAP, and apparently I guess it still works. So what it does is it ca it calculates how much gas you spent. What is gas? Gas is the amount of money that it takes to execute uh, uh, on uh, for a miner to, for his energy. Every transaction costs a certain amount of gas, and you got to pay for that. That's real money. So within a certain amount of time frame, within a certain amount of contract, you can calculate how much gas you used so that you can have a better idea of where your expenses are going when you're doing certain things in crypto kitties when you're doing certain things in decentraland like um because there currently is no other app that calc you would literally have to go through the blockchain the block explorer yourself and individually add up all your gas that you spent to figure out how much money is are you really uh using to execute uh, uh smart uh, um, actions on the blockchain Whew. How we coming through? Give me a break. I'm going in. I'm going in. I don't know how long class is going to be. All right, I'm back, you guys. Now, so now for the token, remember we're starting our own virtual economy, right? So now we got to create the market. Now, people that are working for this token, their their whole thing was to go and sell it for Ethereum. So now uh, we had we had a designer ex actually kind of explain how to purchase KLD token, how to sell it, how to get a hold of it. So this was some really great work one of the members did. And I helped him with the idea, helped guide him. It, it took a community of people to, uh, to explain. It's still, pre I, I know, pretty confusing. But now uh, you need a market. So we decided a decentralized uh, exchange to uh, so that you can buy and sell KLD. So you would need, in order for your, your currency to really have a market, you need an exchange to put it on. So we, we, uh, we, uh, we put it on Ether Delta because decentralized exchanges are much, much easier to, um, to, to start off tokens because centralized exchanges, you need a lot of prereq prerequisites for your coins. To get. It's a whole nother, whole nother thing about getting your token listed, okay? It's a whole nother thing about getting your token listed and it's not easy if you're you're a little man in the game. You're just trying to get your token listed. So decentralized exchanges, there's really no permission. You can list your token, and but it just takes. It's a little bit more confusing, and you got to explain it a little bit more in depth. Okay. Uh, so yes, you need a people a way for people to buy and sell your token for it to have a market for it to create any possible type of uh, revenue. And for you to make a profit is you need to be on some type of exchange. Okay? Now. Now, here's another exchange. It's called OpenSea. This is a cr crypto collectibles um, exchange. So you can, uh, this is like, a, would say a Craigslist of, um, of uh, crypto collectibles. So you got crypto kitties. You got Decentraland, you got My Crypto Heroes, you got Gods Unchained. I'm gonna show you Gods Unchained. That is like apparently like the new crypto uh, trading cards, like blockchain. It, it, people are paying attention to it. So I'm only showing you things people are paying attention to. Gods. I, I think this is it, give me a second. All right, you got Gods Unchained. So you got these trading card games that are kind of like magic that people are buying, selling for real money, for real Ethereum. And you know what I'm saying? If, you, if this is something you're into, like apparently you can play these games with Gods Unchained. And these are worth real money. Like I'm not, these digital 
these because they're unique and they're on the blockchain so these cards are actually really rare they're not like just printed and say they're rare like you can verify their rarity so um so here's another here's another example of some crypto so OpenSea is a way to look up different crypto collectibles you got uh like i said you got uh all types of crypto collectibles you obviously got crypto kitties so so you may and you'll actually probably find better deals on the open sea than the actual marketplace of these uh platforms so it's, you probably find a better deal on open sea over for a crypto kitty because people it's a little bit cheaper than actually going to crypto kitties and buying it because um or you know what i'm saying so there's different techniques but you can you can create your own non-fungible tokens for your virtual economy and then you can trade them for other uh, uh, virtual assets as well so these are something to keep in mind because on Ethereum they're gonna be incorporating gods unchained so you're gonna be able to within the virtual realm you're gonna be able to use crypto collectibles from different uh, different platforms I mean it gets so intense man it gets so intense it gets so intense um, and fun because it's just so much profit uh, potential profit now now how are you going to create how are you going to create this virtual economy you got you got all these different people from around the world they like your idea they want to join your idea they want to help you develop you got en sound engineers you got front-end designers you got back-end developers you got marketing people they all like your idea they all want to join it you're going to need a platform for them and you to converse with so like I said, you want to hit up that Discord. Give it a second. Give it a second. Sorry, my computer kind of froze just now. All right. So I was going to show you my computer kind of froze just now. You need a platform, so you want to use that Discord. Is it still recording? There we go. Sorry, you guys. So give it a second. Um, so this is Kaleidoscope the DAO. I haven't been on the server in a while. It died out. So here's the thing. Oh, I still got an intern. Let me let me see. Let me say what's up, yo. Thing. Give me a second. I'm gonna holler at this dude. See, I had uh, an intern. Sorry, my computer's slow because I'm doing the live stream. So this this is uh, one of the interns. He was grinding. He was definitely, uh, def I'm, I'm still surprised he is, he's in the server. I may start this back up again. Holler at me if you want to join Kaleidoscope the DAO. Literally, we have DAO security, DAO finance, DAO assets, DAO uh, writers, DAO designers, DAO development, crypto education. Literally, I came up with most of this idea. I helped develop this. Like, this was my vision. And, like, now, and, you know, and I really brought it up. And I just couldn't handle it all on my own. Uh, you know, what I'm saying I was I was just it got rough and then I ended up going to LA meet and polite all the bullshit And I kind of fell off on it. We had Dow admins Dow visionaries got different apps. We're working on I mean, we still got plenty of people I just got to bring it back up again and you, this guy still help, you know, so holler at me I may I may start kaleidoscope the dial again a decentralized autonomous organization but this is one of the ways you start your own virtual economy you need a platform you got to discuss and contribute and develop more ideas you're gonna need your own website you're gonna need your own token you're gonna need your own exchange and one of the best resources they have nowadays is Aragon it's a, a, a DAO framework okay this is a DAO framework so it helps you you just sign in with your MetaMask and you can do voting on an organization. You can do pay. You can have transparency on the blockchain. Um, and this is a framework. Jurisdiction. They show you how to do it, and you can do whatever it is on your own. These are some of the ways you can get started without having to do all the initial work. Sorry, my computer is going kind of slow right now. Uh, so Aragon. Uh, dot org. Check it out. I wish I can go deeper, but I'm gonna go to I'm gonna click on this next tab. Uh, give it a second. Sorry, my computer's. Uh, I don't know. I thought 
Linux is uh, it be working good sometimes, and it be, it be not working good sometimes. G give it a second, you guys. All right, so Aragon, as you can see, it's like a dashboard. It's like a personalized way to run your organization. And to, you can handle payouts. Payouts are all done on the blockchain. Everything could be uh, transferred. You got multi-signature wallets. We'll get into that. You have It needs multiple signatures for the funds to be released. You have voting, you have accounting. So Aragon is a framework where you can start developing, you know, Payments, votings, laws, fundraising, identity. You can you can kind of run your organization on top of a framework without doing all, all the extra hard work. Woo! Man. Yo, this was this is crypto class, man. Give me a second. We about to get in the uh uh we about to get in questions and answers. Give me a second. I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting. You know, I'm still getting used to this, getting up the endurance. Ah, getting used to the technology. Sorry about the delays in the beginning. And um, so I gave you a general gist of, you know, virtual economies, you know, and um, it's a lot of information. It's new and we definitely got to go over it again. And it goes even deeper. This is just part one. Uh, this is just part one. And so now ideas of coming up with your own coming up with your own now like I showed you my example you can go through my YouTube video you can go to the website kld.life and got and just understand and read the white napkin and understand that I came up with 85 percent 85 95 percent of that entire idea and it manifested and the, one of the ways it manifests is because I actually spoke it into existence and I put it out there in the virtual realm and it became a virtual reality. That's a twist, I never thought of that. That's a different twist on virtual reality. It became a virtual reality. Um, and so the way it died out, like I said, I started it with uh, this the 18 year old kid from London and he just ended up being a very un unreliable partner, you know, very uh, just wishy-washy, not, and it, it took a lot of toll because I was having to interact and explain and develop and study and I, w you know, I couldn't do it all on my own and it, things just kind of slipped out and I just, I fell off of it and, um, but I'm thinking about getting again. So, starting your own virtual economy. Come up with an idea. Come up with a, a concept that's revolutionary something that people come up with the uh solve a problem the problem i was trying to solve and you probably guys can help me was people want to travel but people don't always have the actual money to travel people need a place that and so i took i took what i <clears throat> what i was needing in my personal life or what i desired and i said hey what if i can create a solution for everybody what if i can create a solution for everybody um what if what if I could yes and so I I I, I come up with the solution that I that I saw cryptocurrencies could and blockchain technology could help and I put it out there and uh other people other people saw saw that vision and some of them still do you know so when you're coming with your own virtual economy look around you figure out what it is you need or you desire desire the most and fix that problem for other people okay that I know that's crazy I, I didn't say fix it for yourself I said find out what you want the most and find a way to fix it for everyone else then you end up kind of having it it's weird the way the world works it's really weird so also creating non fungible tokens if you're not necessarily savvy enough to create your own economy because you want you want to study law you want to study finance if you're going to be creating your own virtual economy you want to figure because you can get pushed out you as a creator because remember the point is decentralization 
So you have to decide, and even me personally, I had to decide um, how far do I want to be in control of everything, of this project, because everyone's, because it's easily able to, things to get centralized when everybody's coming to you for the answer. That's centralization. And the whole purpose of me creating this for, was for me not to control it. So now you gotta let go of your ego. Now, now you gotta let go of your ego. And now you got to, um, you got to create an idea and let go of it. That could benefit everybody else. But here's the thing, if it can benefit everybody else, there's a, there's a, there's a potential to, for it to benefit someone else way more than benefits you even though you created it you gotta let go look up the guy jackson palmer the guy who created dogecoin dogecoin almost hit a two bit hit a two billion dollar market cap and um he doesn't even own any dogecoin he created it purely out of fun mock mimicry just memeing and trolling and it ended up really taking off and he's just totally disconnected. I, I don't I don't own it. It was a joke where I started off with. I'm glad people like it, but I don't really own it. I'm glad I created it. But I you know, so I'm not saying you're not supposed to not take profit. What I'm saying is let go of your ego if you're gonna create your own virtual economy. You know what I'm saying? Let let go of the need to wanna to control everything. Because this you're gonna lose. In the world of decentralization, you're going to lose with that type of mentality. So that's another thing that most people aren't really ready for. Um, not, so, so that's another uh, aspect of creating your own virtual economy. Now, you want, there's, there's a huge, huge market for um, kids, children, children in blockchain technology. I'm just giving you some ideas to throw out. I'm throwing out some ideas for you to kind of go and you know sp go on your own. There's still a huge market uh, for, t for teaching and education in cryptocurrency, which is why, what I chose to focus on uh, more specifically. Um, there's still a huge market for uh, developing countries ad ad adoption for, uh, and understanding for people in different countries that are very far away from this. There, it, that's, that's, an emerge, that's a market untapped. That's what you gotta focus on. Untapped markets. Untapped markets. Okay? Give me one second. All right, so focus on untapped markets. Figure out a problem that you want, need, or been desiring and find a way to solve it for everyone else, okay? Um, like I said, now, <clears throat> people, the fantasy world, as far as creating new characters and new types of Pokemon or new types of, that's always going to be uh, a, a market. You're always gonna find some fascination of some new character or cartoon or some type of, uh, what's the right word? I wanted to use some other word. But, um, so, if you're a good drawer, if you're a good, Whatever it is, if you're a good architect, if you're a good architect, so you wanna team up with other people that have different strengths and weaknesses. That was the thing, that's what pushed me ahead because I made sure to tell people, yo, even though this was my idea, you're still welcome to have your idea and your experience. And please take it upon yourself to add on what you feel you need. And once you give people that freedom that, are, that is in your organization, they're going to take your idea and they're gonna, flourish with it. So um, encourage people to, in your organization to be themselves and to push themselves and, and not fear judgment. And you're gonna have disagreements and that's where voting comes in and that's where you wanna have Aragon and these platforms is how do, how in a world, how do you govern yourselves? You know what I'm saying? How do you govern yourselves in your organization and you, how do you make things transparent? And that's what the voting comes in. And that's what block, voting on the blockchain is so legit. So you can see what everyone voted for the most part in your organization. So what everyone voted the most, that's what people go for. There's no more, there's no more uh, behind the scenes stuff. All right, so that, that's gonna be class one.
crypto class one and virtual economies. I know it looked like I went over a lot. Trust me, I didn't even, it, go, it, go, it just hit the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg. So we got questions and answers. Hit me up in the chat. Let me know if you got questions and answers. I'm, I'm keep this segment open. Um, Yep, yep, yeah, questions they already get, uh, hit me up. Okay, so first one is what is blockchain? What is blockchain? Somebody asked what is blockchain? Blockchain is a revolutionary technology uh, that is, that is uh, run on softwares. And a blockchain essentially is it's just a group of transactions that are included in a block that are tied to a, the last group of transactions. Tied to the last group of transactions. The reason why that's so powerful, and it's immutable data, it's transparent data, it's censorship, censorship resistant data, um, and blockchain is essentially a decentralized uh, database. What's the next question? What is the next question? How to attract people into virtual real estate? How to attract people into virtual real estate? Great question. You want to discuss with them all the flaws of <clears throat> physical real estate. There you go. You want to explain to them, wait, first of all, you want to explain all the benefits of physical real estate. You always want to explain that, which most people already know. So you don't have to explain it too deeply. But then you want to point out all the flaws of physical real estate. And then how, and then you want to put out, you want to give, you want to show how the virtual real estate c solves all those problems or at least fixes it, or at least makes it easier than the physical real estate. So talk good about physical real estate, right? But then you wanna point out the negativities. The negativities of physical real estate is large amount of capital, usually, usually, uh, um, invasion of privacy, such as data, uh, such as uh, your own personal ID and accounts and information, and that's an, I call it just a generally, generally call it invasion of privacy for physical, then you have um, uh, cost, repair cost of physical uh, real estate. There's always gonna be something that breaks down or something that needs maintenance, whether the grass grows or the wind blows or something's gonna need physical maintenance that's an additional, so un, un, I would say more unexpected additional costs when it comes to physical real estate. See what I'm saying? Like you wanna, you want to, sh you wanna show, show them and then you wanna be like virtual real estate, Hey, it re not really a whole lot breaks down in the virtual world, and if it does, you can kind of just delete and re-upload re the shit, you know? Yeah, it, virtual real estate is much, much cheaper. Uh, there's no identity. Uh, as there's no invasion of privacy. I don't have to reveal any form of identity. That, that anyone that's on that blockchain around the entire world actually knows I, that I'm the official owner. And if you were to try to establish ownership in the physical world over real estate, it's going to take a lot of documents. It's going to take a lot of paperwork. You got to show up to court. That's gas money. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know so uh, verification can be solved on the blockchain instantaneously. But verification over physical real estate assets, you gotta have the police show up, you gotta show a piece of paperwork, da 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 da, who knows, divorce, uh, back taxes. I mean, goodness gracious, goodness gracious. I'm not saying nothing's wrong with that, but this is the reality. And so maybe, obviously, you would, you know, I would say the most ideal strategy would be to profit. Uh, enough from the virtual real estate to purchase some physical real estate. So you got, uh, you know what I'm saying, feeding both ponds and beef, uh, feeding both pools, you know what I'm saying? You know, this is just me spitting game off the top of the dome, you know what I'm saying? Crypto game. You loving it. Crypto class. All right, crypt what's up? Next next question. Next question. Okay, it says, on real estate, they take any crypto or is there a particular one? And, and really, and, and, and so. On virtual real estate, and, uh, so, they take any so yeah, let me let, let's make that clear. There's no one uh, absolute platform of virtual real estate. There are many different forms. Anyone can create their own virtual real estate. It just so happens that Decentraland hap happens to be the most popular, the most user base, uh, the most active community, I would say, or the most you know most amount of volume as far as Ethereum b buying and selling on the platform. So, but that's not the only one. Um, now, uh, 
Decentraland has its own um, token. Uh, it has its own virtual economy. So that's mana. So like, yeah, there's not just any one and you can create your own. Um, so yeah, each and each platform is going to accept a different form of payment based on whatever value and you know I'm saying they have on their platform. Are you saying Moeda loyalty points on token and Binance? No, nah, next question. Okay. Um, is crypto more profitable than stocks? Um, to each its own. Is crypto more profitable than stocks? It's how you play the game, man. Can nobody tell you? Uh, nah, nothing, man. It's how you play the game. You can make money whether the price goes up. You can make money whether the price goes down. That's the beautiful thing about trading. It's, it's, it's a pull of opportunity 24-7. So if you if you come up in the game, it's it's your fault. If you if you don't come up in the game, it's, it's your fault. Like, it's, it's so, and you can go in and jump out the game anytime. So it's up to you how much you make. Like, there is no yes or right or wrong, man. People are, are living in an illusion when they think that something is just totally this or just totally that. You know, it's, it's like, nah, man. Next, next question. Okay. Um, is crypto here to stay? It's, uh, come on, better mm -hmm. question. Uh, what are smart contracts? All right, give me a second. We got some questions right here. Do you have a plan for a student? Do, do I have a plan for a student to start making money slowly while learning? Yeah, man, there's, there's many different plans, man. It all depends what you do, bro. Uh, one of the strategies I use was I started freelancing uh, my time and energy. Instead of applying for a job, I started letting people know that I was available to work. I started letting people know that what hours I was willing to work, the things I was willing to do for work, how long I was willing to work, and how I wanted to be treated at work, and how I could or couldn't, you know, saying how I would be able to get to. It. I let every, I, I let people know what was the whole deal from the get go, so that there was no. I let people know what type of money I wanted. I let people know I wanted cash at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? I let people know what was up from the get-go. And from then, people started treating me way differently. I ended up becoming my own boss. Is that instead of asking, I told what what I, I, I set the rules and parameters of what I'm willing to do and the way the ways I'm willing to do it. And if you're interested and you find that cool, I'm willing to work for you. But only for the day, so it's really working for myself because I can choose not to work with you tomorrow if I don't because I have the I have, I have the ability to say yes or no because I have other people calling me. You know what I'm saying? So that's a whole nother thing. But yeah, that's the way you can start making some bread instead of going applying for jobs. Let people know what you you start you start you start creating your own job for yourself. You got you got skill you got. You can pick up a shovel. You can push a fucking broom. You can fucking paint a wall. Let people know you're willing to um. Let people know you're willing to learn. Say, hey, yo, I'm willing to learn. And I guarantee you, more people would like a person who's willing to learn than someone who thinks they know everything all the time and just won't, won't is not uh, able to listen to anything or accept any new ideas. So <clears throat> that's what you'll find out surprising. What The surprising thing is that I ended up getting paid more and treated more respectfully from working on, and working less hours from working for myself than working for someone else. And I was doing the exact same shit. I just told people what I'm willing to do, you know what I'm saying, versus asking what should I do. All right, that's not that's not necessarily crypto related, but if that's a, a one way to get your bread up to start purchasing crypto, then I can see that. You know what I'm saying? That's a hustle. And every everyone that you work for, or that uh, that you choose to work for yourself for, um, let them know you you accept cryptocurrencies and you're open to it. Let them know, even if they look at you crazy or whatever, just say I accept crypto. All right, let's look at. Let me, let me get these questions real quick. What's the most secure browser to use when building a participant? What's the most secure browser to use when building, participating in a virtual economy? It's not necessarily the browser uh, that makes any difference. A secure browser, you would either use Firefox with the plugs in plugins, or you would use Brave browser. But as far as uh, building, it uh, it has nothing to do with necessarily security when it comes to just virtually developing uh, 
you know, these, these, uh, these three-dimensional somewhat images. Um, so, so those are kind of two different, two different uh, realms. Uh, but I guess that's a good question. I, feel you, I guess that's a good question. Um, Yeah, I'm a, all right, we're gonna get in, that's a whole nother lecture at Smart Contracts, but we're gonna get into it real quick. Uh, yeah, like I said, it, it depends, you know. So Smart Contracts, uh, they act as the middleman, they act, they act as the intermediary, they're a piece of software that um, they only act when orders are uh, uh, triggered. They do have an address so they can actually hold money but nothing happens to them unless things are like money is sent to them essentially so it just it acts as like a, a a reaction mechanism so a transaction gets sent to a smart contract a p runs a piece of software code runs a piece of software code then something happens on the blockchain and then something happens so it's the intermediary you can, you can uh you can trust more than likely trust software code over a human individual i would say for the most part yeah um so it acts as the middleman. It's just a piece of software code that has uh, different functions. Um, yeah, and it, it's able to hold uh, virtual money, digital assets. Um, are crypto faucets legit? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Yes, they're legit. And the fact that you're actually creating, I mean, you're actually collecting crypto. Um, but as far as actually withdrawing or cashing out enough for it to be a significant, no. Uh, that's where they, that, so it's like you're almost, you're, what happens is it's a way to uh, incentivize you for your time, t attention, and energy. So it's almost worse than like, advertisements because you, you you think you're getting something and you spend a lot of time and energy uh, collecting these crypto faucets but then when the market evaluation look at it it's like yo I did all that for like less than two cents but you know hey the market could go up but still it's you you're collecting such a small amount that you're better off buying it or doing other uh, selling your goods and services for crypto you got another one all right, family. So it's Coinbase. It's Coinbase. All right. It's Coinbase safe to buy Yeah. As far as yeah, I'm gonna do a video about um, I'm gonna do a video about uh, the the new exchanges to use. Everyone's telling me to check out Qcoin. Or, uh, people are saying they go to Qcoin. Uh, for Americans, you can check that out. But it's only a matter of time before the KYC hits them too. So what's gonna um, what's gonna happen is. Americans sooner or later are going to be locked out of the global financial system. And I'm saying that, I'm telling you that. And that's going to be a very scary situation. And you're going to be like, Crypto Boost sounds crazy. He sounds crazy. But you guys don't realize it's already been happening. Okay? When they start cutting you guys off exchange by exchange, you're going to be stuck in the world of centralized digital currencies and fiat currencies and you're going to end up having to break the law by using privacy coins to transact and interact or using VPNs and privacy coins to access other exchanges and to do business outside of your country it's not going to happen in just America but I'm telling you it's going to catch Americans off guard they think you Americans think that like yo they they you know they get you know, it's all good you know they got rap music and you know what I'm saying but nah, man, you get you're getting locked out slowly due to your uh, due to your uh, gl uh, national regulations on your uh, cyber cyber uh, watch uh, cyber security. I mean, your data slave. So it's gonna be, you're gonna be it's gonna get real interesting as far as Americans accessing cryptocurrency uh, without being traced or tracked uh, or regulated or persecuted in, in some form. I'm not saying it uh, until. Americans are more educated on other forms of uh, privacy coins. So that I'll, I'll be coming out with the data, the intro course. Also, the crypto course, part three, will be coming out. I hope you guys learned a lot. Sorry for the trouble in the beginning. You know, it's all good, you know. And I'm just got to spit game. 
Much love. Aloha.